Hey guys, have you ever thought about powering some external accessories for your Tesla? This could be anything like auto presenting door handles that have color in them, as well as some neat, unique underglow. That takes a lot of power as well. You can even power a refrigerator and an air fryer at the same time while having the underglow on and more. More, like more LED lights that's gonna go inside the Tesla as well as more interior lights. And on top of that, I'm adding a second row of underglow. So I'm going to be using a lot of electronics. I need a lot of power for my car. Literally anything you want. You can see that I have these outlets that are going to be filled. I have these USB ports that I'm going to fill as well as, check this out. I mean, you probably won't use this, but you got a, you even got a light down here. So as you can see, the possibilities are here and they are pretty much endless with the power that this thing packs. You can literally power anything you want and need out of the Tesla. I even have my laptop as an example. So if you have low power stuff like phones, laptops, tablets, drone batteries, whatever, this works as well. And you have the option to have other things like a refrigerator for if you go on trips and such. You can pretty much do this all in an hour. So it really makes no sense not to. And I'll walk you through how to do it. But first we're gonna talk about which battery is best for you. If you already know this step, then you can skip ahead. I have a timeline in the description. You can skip ahead to the next part but if you don't, I'm gonna help you decide which battery to get and then I'm gonna help you install it. All right guys, so first you're gonna need to determine how many things you want to power. This is gonna determine what battery you're going to get. Once you know how many things you want to power, you're going to need to add up their max power consumption and see what is right for you. Remember, we look at wattage for the power and voltage times current or amperage is going to be the total watts. We're gonna add it together and the total is going to be what we look at in determining our battery this is going to be the main thing because if we need to power all of these electronics at one time we need to make sure our battery can supply enough power to power everything at one time going through this we're going to use my setup as an example so we're going to reference that a lot and we can see if you have anything similar power wise or application wise first we're going to start off with our lower end battery this is going to be the anchor 521 i'll have a link in the description below now the anchor 521 is a great battery for most people and this might be the one you get on sale as as you can see it can be as low as hundred and seventy dollars which for this it's a pretty great deal first off it's a 256 watt hour this is the size of the battery and this little boy has a max output of 300 watts so you can power things that are drawing 300 watts at one time I bet most of you want like a refrigerator that's what I'm gonna assume and most refrigerators take 40 to 60 watts for the first few minutes as they power up and cool the inside and then idling they'll take about four to eight watts so you don't really need much wattage for that. It's really just, just knock off 10 watts from your 300 watts right there. Now underglow, right? Everyone loves underglow and this could go into the car socket part right here. And that's gonna draw about 110 amps. Now, if you want auto presenting door handles, which are awesome, they can also tap into the car socket. So you're totally fine there. It's only gonna draw about 10 watts. So in total, that's about 120 watts plus the refrigerator, which will be from like an AC port right here. And that is going to be a total of around 130 watts. You also have a USB-C and it has 60 watt fast charging, which is great for laptops and drones and tablets. And and two USB A's with 5 volt 3.6 amps to total and this can also charge laptops drones phone lanterns and anything else you might need so if you're taking this for like basic camping you just want a refrigerator and you're gonna have a gas stove this is pretty good because remember you can run this off the Tesla and you'll be totally fine now there's only one limitation with this setup and that is the charging so the battery only accepts 65 watts now if you're just powering a refrigerator and to charge devices, you will be totally fine. It comes with a problem though, if you plan on doing any underglow or high power interior lighting, the regular ambient lighting should be totally fine because this battery only accepts 65 watts in the back of it through the input to charge it. 65 watts is not a lot. This will be enough to continuously power any accessories, like I said, so like refrigerators, laptops, all that small stuff. But the problem, again comes in with the underglow the underglow alone will continuously pull about 100 watts at max meaning we will drain the battery faster than it can charge itself but don't worry this is completely fine because remember we have a total power of 256 watt hours total this means we can power the underglow for about three hours 100 watts per hour will take off 200 watts from the battery's capacity which basically depletes it but 
during those two hours, it will gain back about 120 watts, allowing you to ride around with your underglow for three hours. But once you do that, it'll be dead dead. So if you don't want to run underglow, even if you want to run interior lights and you want to run a refrigerator and other appliances, small stuff, you will be totally fine. Now, if you want to run the underglow, you're gonna need something a little bit bigger. Let me introduce you to the Anchor 5. 35. Let's talk about upgrades. First off, it could be on sale for as low as $350, and that's a really great deal. Honestly, you might as well just get this one. It comes with more ports, you see another USB-A, and two more AC outlets. It also has a higher input charge, so you'll be able to run your underglow, but we'll get to that in a second. So let's talk about upgrades. First off, the price, remember, it can be bought for as low as almost $350. Like, look at all these coupons popping up everywhere. And although it's almost two times the price as the previous one, if you want to have worry-free, this is the way to go. You can power blenders, water heaters, whatever you want. As long as the output, you're not drawing more than 500 watts, you are fine. It has a total capacity of about 500 watt hours, meaning without even charging this, you could power the underglobe, for example, for five hours straight. You now have three USB-A ports and two more AC ports. Now the big thing is the charging. I really want to stress this because the input is now, instead of 60 watts, it is 120 watts. So again, you'll be able to power your underglow non-stop as well as a few more appliances equally. Now, if you're gonna be using a little bit more, like 150 watts, guys, this is still totally fine because even though your battery may drain while you're using it, it'll be super slow, so you're all good. If you do need more charge, you can even charge it through this USB-C port. Now, you can do that with the other one as well, but the input's so small, it doesn't really make too much a difference. From the Tesla, you can get an extra 25 watts through this. So you're gonna be charging this for a total of 140 watts input. With this, you'll be totally fine running your underglow as well as other appliances through the AC ports. The output of the battery caps out about 500 watts, so if you want to power a microwave, air fryer, or electric stove, that ain't happening. You're going to need what I got. And as you can see, that is going to be the Anchor 555. You can find this on sale for as low as $600. And with that, this beast is 1,012 watt hours. It is a kilowatt. Remember, some Tesla batteries are around like 65 kilowatts. It has a maximum output of, get this guys, 1,000 watts. You can run just about anything you will need straight from the Tesla because not only do you have a kilowatt of energy, but the input charge, so the charge going into this is 200 watts. Let's first talk about this upgraded output. A thousand watts max? Wow. Guys, this is what I got mainly to power my air fryer. To save money in all the trips I take, it is, oh my gosh, a lifesaver. And talk about convenience. When you charge, sometimes you're super low. It'll take 30, 40 minutes to charge. Pop some food in the air fryer, wait for it to heat up for 10 minutes, and then just eat for 30 minutes, and pff, you're done charging. You can keep driving. Going back to the input of 200 watts, you can also add another 25 watts from the USB-C from the Tesla. Though alone, it will accept 100 watts watts input not only does it do 100 watts input it also can output 100 watts and you don't have to give up a usb-c slot because now you have three usb-c slots with the other ones supporting 60 watts anyways with the 200 watts input you can easily power your underglow and anything else without draining the battery at all i never drain this on a normal use it is always at 100 percent and these are all lithium phosphates so it's more okay than leaving a lithium ion at 100 percent when i do turn my air fryer on if i really need to heat something up for a long time it'll drain 20 percent at most and then it charges about 140 watts so it fills up right again right fast this is definitely the battery you need to go with if you want to future proof your electronics upgrades now keep in mind this is so overkill the anchor 555 and the anchor 535 will probably meet most of your needs but if you're going to run an air fryer or like a microwave or a induction little stove cooktop you're going to need this because of that thousand watt power output if you have any questions on how to let's say like calculate how much power you're going to need i kind of just 
showed you this. I didn't really go over it. Please leave a comment below. And if you want advice on what battery to get, just let me know. I have all of these linked in the description below for you to check out and see for yourself. All right, guys. So as always, I'm going to show you a circuit diagram of how this works. And of course, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And if you want any help wiring, let me know. First off, determine, are you going to use the DC to DC converter or the cigarette lighter splitter in the center console? Whichever you use, this will work just the same. I'm going to use the DC to DC converter just because it's simpler in our wiring diagram, but again, it's going to be the same either way you do it wiring wise. We have the rear seats, DC to DC converter. You're going to have two like little hooks that go onto the DC to DC converter or ring terminals, and you're going to run these wires down here. If you use the splitter, you just run the wires from the splitter down here. From the DC to DC converter, we're gonna go underneath the two panels that are next to it. So the kick panel, as well as the leather panel that's on the side of the seats. And then we're gonna go through the carpeting to get into the back of the trunk. Once we are in the back of the trunk, I've dedicated that back with the line right here. We are going to want to go eventually to our anchor battery. But first, let's talk about this fuse first. We're gonna run it to a 15 amp fuse. It's important you do 15 amps because this anchor battery can do 10 amps power. So do 12 or 15 amp fuse, just so you know you don't go too close to how much it's drawing, but you don't wanna to go too far over it. So 15 amp fuse, and this is gonna to go to our relay. If you're not familiar with relays, that's okay. It's a switch that tells it to turn on. It allows high power to go through, and the trigger switch telling it to turn on and off can be super low power meaning a thin wire so let's first talk about going into our relay going into our relay we're going to continue with our thick wire you don't know how to make it thicker pen properties oh okay there we go so we're going to make it thick just like the wire coming out of our dc to dc converter should be around 14 gauge wire from here we also have this wire and this wire we are going to want to continue the ground from our dc to dc converter and then we also have to ground our relay all right guys so we've hit a slight change of plans and that's just because i've actually wired this already and i've figured this out now through a lot of time that i spent and now you won't have to spend so this needs to change just a little bit. This is the only thing that needs to change. So the wire going from our relay to the ground, no, we don't want that. That's just gonna be a two-way plug connecting the ground coming in to our one kilowatt external battery. What we're going to do instead is connect the ground from our relay to the DC port of our one kilowatt external battery or any external battery. That's what I'm going to do because, and this was very important actually, this DC plug is going to be what's running up to the wires that I have up here that the switch is tapping into. So both of these wires, the positive and like ground right here, both of these wires are coming from the DC port in my external battery. The relay is grounded to the same port that my switch is grounded to. That's important. And then we're pulling 12 volts from it. The last two things is really the power coming out of our relay. It's gonna be a blue wire, but shown here it's red. Uh, it's going to be power going into our one kilowatt external battery from the relay once we have a switch telling it to turn on. And the switch is gonna be right here. And so basically this switch is coming from, well, our switch up here. Whenever we toggle it on or off, it's going to be on or off. And that's gonna turn our relay on or off, allowing current to go through. So that's going to be pretty much it for our wiring, guys. If you have any questions, I know we changed it a little bit last minute, but and if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Always, always leave a comment below. All right, guys, change of scene again. We're going to be talking about wiring from the external battery to the relay. And it's actually pretty simple. All you're going to want to do is use the car charger, one of this. This is what the anchor came with. It's a humongous DC port. We're going to take this, the car charger one, and we're just going to cut it. Yep, we're snipping it. So you're just gonna cut the cable that's going to the port and then you're just going to wire it to the relay. That's pretty much it. You wanna test it to make sure that the middle is supposed to be positive. So if you have like a multimeter, something like this guy right here, you would take the hot wire and you would put it in the middle of that DC port and you take the negative and you put it on the outside. So that would look something like this. The outside is this, this is all negative. And the inside, that little metal tip, that should be your positive. So you tap the multimeter to that. If you get a positive, it's 12 to 14, or I think 16 volts, then you're doing it right. 
if you get a negative number, you're doing it wrong. And you're just gonna have to switch which way the wires are connected to your relay. That's pretty much it. All right, guys, I have everything wired up. Now let's take a look at it. If you have any questions, as always, please leave a comment below. I will totally help you out. Look, there's a kitty over there. All right, so enough messing around. Everything wired properly. So let's first take a look at our relay. So our relay is right here. And essentially what we have is this. This is how everything is going. So you see these two wires up top right here? These are coming from either your DC to DC converter or your cigarette lighter in the middle. So one is going into this ground. This blue is a ground row, right? I'm gonna be grounding the anchor battery. So this is the ground side of the anchor battery going into here. So ground of the whatever you're drawing power from to here. From there, we have to deal with power. So from our relay, we have this blue cable right here. This is our power cable. And this wire, the one with I have red tape on, that's from the anchor. So this is the negative of the anchor, this is the positive of the anchor. So negative with the negative of the part we're pulling power from, I'm just gonna say the DC to DC converter, just to make things simpler. And then we also have this wire, which is coming out of the anchor. This is the positive wire and is getting power from our relay right here. Now, how do we get power from our DC to DC converter into our relay? Well, that's going to be from this red wire right here. It's going into this channel. It's gonna go through this fuse. This fuse is gonna loop back around, go through here, and then it's gonna come out to our relay right here, which will allow us to deliver power in this third channel. And that's pretty much it, guys. We have one more wire coming out of our relay. It's going to be this black one right here that's gonna be ground. I'm grounding it to my underglow. So for the underglow, this is positive, and this is the negative channel. You can see that the negative channel right here, it has this black wire, and this one is from the relay. Now, I've already tested it with my multimeter, and even when the DC port on the anchor is off, it still acts as a ground. So this is totally fine to ground it to. I was about to ground it to this bolt back here. If you don't have that option, like your cigarette lighter or whatever is not always grounded when it's off, we have this right here, this bolt you can ground to, and it's a pretty good ground spot. So that was there in case I needed it, but don't need it. So that's our relay all hooked up. The last wire we have to deal with is this trigger wire. Now this trigger wire I'm going to run up to the front. I already have a wire for it sorted for that. We're just going to use some clips and clip it together and I'm going to put all this behind here. And that's pretty much it guys. We have everything all sorted out. So I'm going to finish wiring up this trigger wire. I'm going to put everything back together and then I'll show you it charging the anchor. All right guys now with your choice of battery selected it's time to now put it in the sub trunk. So it might slide around a little bit and that actually happened to mind when I first put this in the sub trunk. What I did to prevent it was put pieces of velcro on the bottom of the battery and that actually really helped because the trunk it's carpet and so the velcro held onto the carpet and it kept it pretty well in place. So yeah I mean it wiggles for sure but it doesn't really move too much. Now let's talk about panels. If you're wiring it from the center console or if you're wiring it from the DC to DC converter, there are a few panels that you're gonna have to remove. Fortunately, most of them are just held on with clips and they're pretty easy to remove. So like in the center console, you'll probably have to pop all of that off, run it underneath here, and then run it out the back right here. You can run it through here, and then this is where you're gonna find the similarity of the DC to DC converter. It's just gonna be under here, there's two power posts, and you're just going to run it all the way back here. That's pretty much how you get back here. There's a clip holding this in on each side. So one over there and one over here. Take this off and then you can remove the carpet after you remove this piece, pull it up and then towards the cabin. That's how you get all this area. Then your wires are gonna come out through here, whole carpet all done. So I followed the whole wiring diagram. I put everything together. Now, I guess we should just try to see if it works, right? Let's go over to the switch I have wired in the center console. Let's turn this on. When I go to plug it in, we can see up front that we have input, about 140 watts of input. So as you can see, we now have power. So that's great, everything is good. And then when I turn off the switch, so let's click it off. And then when we look, I'm gonna turn this on, you can see we have nothing, no power, nothing. Let's go back over here inside of the cabin, pull the switch or tap the switch, touch the switch, do something with the switch, make the switch go blue. You'll see you have input power. That's pretty much it guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, of course, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Always love to help everyone out.
And remember, keep innovating, keep exploring, and stay awesome. More mods to come, so stay subscribed for that. One word of caution though, guys. Um, this battery in the subtrunk gets really, really hot. And guys, I mean really, really, really hot. So I have a video coming up on how to best keep it cool. There's one way that's totally free. There's a second way that cools it better, which is a little more expensive, but you know what? It cools it very well. And the third way, oh my gosh, it's it's so cool and it cools it perfectly. Now, if you're curious, make sure you stay subscribed to see that video. Depending on what you're running, this might not even be a problem for you, but for some people, depending on what you're running, if it's like me, it will be. So just stay careful with that. All right, that, that's it. Bye.